so let us approve the meeting minutes from our uh, January 5th meeting. Are there any comments? Any corrections? I noticed a little bit of, um, on the last paragraph on page one on your actions, I was having a little trouble understanding what that was about. I think there's something wrong. Are you talking about the painting of the... Getting the estimate of the painting of the of just the globe? Yeah, because we had said, it, we, like, it's two different things. Get a cost of what the whole thing would cost. Yes. And then just get a cost of what the orb or just the painting part with the logo would cost. Okay. I just think there's some... We, uh, I see the word thing, which is rather <laughs> open-ended. Yeah. Hey, we want to get boxed in on this. If that could just be we will a little bit. approved with a clarification. And, uh, the sentence right above it, I think you meant them and not then. Uh, strip logo on them, not the new or some way. Yep, logo. got that. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Jim, did you have something? Uh, I believe the BCC clarified the direction. TDC. Of, uh, the TDC, sorry. Yep. Clarified it's in the my... direction of this uh, piece, and we'll get an update on it. Mm -hmm. Any other, anything else to discuss on that? Okay, do I have a motion to approve the minutes um, as corrected? So moved. Okay, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Yes, I to get a second. Second, a motion. Second. <laughs> All those approved say aye. Aye. Anybody opposed? Okay, so we'll accept the minutes as corrected. Moving on to John, we will talk about new business with the draft of the marketing scope being our first topic. Yep, and you'll see a couple five items under new business. Uh, as you said, scope is uh, very, very important, and I'll come back to that. We do have a uh, public request for an agenda item today. Jack is with us and we'll get to that under item B, which is uh, softball escape TV. Um, we'll talk about the marketing uh, co-op program, really it, as the first thing, it, it goes in front of the full marketing uh, program because of the amount of time that it takes to traffic that. And we are lucky enough to have Kate here today who um, is our expert on that. Uh, and then touch on the new research, and then hopefully just a conversation that we don't have any materials on the content versus uh, context. And then, as you said, we'll, we'll give you some updates on Water Tower, Analytics, our Southern Living Partnership, and go from there if that sounds good to everybody. Okay, so first item, as mentioned, is this current scope of services. Uh, we are in our fourth year of a possible four with our marketing services, which are again currently provided by Zender Communications with offices in New Orleans, Baton Rouge, and Nashville. Um, and, you know, I, with that pending, frankly, and the fact that so much has happened in four years, um, I didn't feel very comfortable that what scope from 2010 or 2012 was was necessary or effective, so uh, we spent a lot of energy um, really just trying to get a handle on today. And so this is uh, enough to give just about anybody a headache, but I'd really like to go through it with you, because if we don't have this right, then it's gonna be pretty tough to think about seeking somebody to continue this work. Um, and this is, as you know, seven million dollars a year in a three billion dollar industry that's growing faster than anybody can predict. So uh, hopefully you all had a chance to at least go through it once. Uh, I'm open to doing this in any way, shape, or form that you care to, except read the whole thing because everybody in here will curse uh, me <laughs> at length. But um, sorry, we are, it's, it's for sure, we are streaming it. So, um, maybe just the topical sections, would that work to, to touch on each one of these? Um, the overall, obviously, um, high expectations we place on ourselves to be best in class. What do you think? Sorry. So, John, before you yes. ask this, is there Please. any way, are you, 
benchmarking this against Zender's performance, or is this just a, the scope of work that we need accomplished? This is what's happening. And so we really stopped and took the responsibility of saying, well, what's happening today? If, if we were going to sit down for three, four hours and I was going to get into the nitty gritty, what's happening? What, what are we doing? Um, part of the disconnect is we're doing so much work sort of quietly sometimes. It's like, well, you guys do TV and radio, right? If you read this, you know it's a little bit more significant than that. It's a little bit more thoughtful, hopefully. It's a little bit more, we challenge ourselves. Uh, a little more surgical, hopefully. So really trying to get past, uh, we promote brand attributes and visitation. Well, what the heck does that mean? Uh, so this is really what we feel is behind it. Uh, and if we don't advertise that says we're looking for somebody you know, who can demonstrate an intimate knowledge of the destination, we're looking for somebody who knows what client you know, support is as it relates to financial billing, research, analytics, social media, creative, um, we're, we're going to be at a loss. So we needed to get a handle on what is today. Um, and again, really hard to digest this. I think. And, and so would we automatically want to move away from Zender or are they? We're required uh, um, by county policy that you go through a request for proposal. You, you get any number of open proposals. There's a lot of guidelines, a lot of requirements, huge long uh, selection process. So we did that in 2012. Zender was the uh, firm um, evaluated to be most responsible, most responsive with the best price, and that's how you select a proposal. Um, you only contract for essentially one year at a time in Walton County, and in this agreement it was stipulated that you have the option to renew one year at a time three times. So that's how we've ended up in our fourth of four terms because we've been satisfied enough to do it again in 13 and 14 in, in 2015, taking us to looking at October 1, 2017, as not having an agreement for marketing services. So I'm a thousand percent sure Zender will be reapplying for this, but so might a whole bunch of other people who believe that they have uh, the ability to serve us. And it's a tough, it's a tough time to have to be forced to go through that if things are successful, which generally most people would say they are, but it is required. Thanks for clarification. Okay. John, can I ask a question? Please. Okay, about the scope of services and where this description plus came from. Yes. Did you take what was put together in 2010 and then you augmented based on current markets? Is that what I'm hearing? We very much did start by looking at what had been used in the past for RFPs and the scope that was on the existing contract and on the previous contract. And that's where you know, I, I felt uncomfortable, to be honest with you, that it was, uh, did not, I don't, did not represent what day-to-day -day life is right now and what we are, um, what we challenge ourselves with, what we say we're going to do. So that's when it's like, this would be a good time to stop and make sure we have a handle on what the day-to-day -day effort is now before we even bother going forward to an RFP. And then could you, I mean, without putting you on the spot or anything, but can you give us an idea of how it's different? You know, like what specifically, when you went in and said, well, this is, you know, we've grown beyond this, there's a lot more day to day. I'm just curious as to where the, that, if that went into yeah. anything particular area. The remedial answer is it's three times as long and twice as detailed. Yeah. Um, when it was very general and said, you know, uh, advertise in core markets. Well, that sounds easy. I think you'll see when we talk about media placements that our approach is a little bit more, um, have a few more requirements to accomplish those things. And so that's really what, you know, when you get into brand strategy, well, what, what does it take to do that? Well, you know, high documentation of every financial situation, you know, robust return on investment, you know, media buying considerations and on and on and on tactical metrics that'll you know cause you nightmares if you read them all I mean it's pretty it's pretty significant I'm proud of what's on this piece of paper because it's hard and it's a lot um, you know you might you might even give fair criticism that says you got to cut this down before it's even any part of an RFP because uh, it'll It'll choke a horse. It's but, a little intimidating. Mm -hmm. I mean, for, you know. It is. But imagine going into a process trying to select 
30 million or 40 million dollars with the placements over the next couple of years with half the detail. John question as well, knowing that the old document maybe served as the foundation and then through brainstorming you tried to encompass what we're doing today. Do you think the document also, to the degree you can, incorporates things that you see evolving in the short-term future? Does it anticipate things? I'm not sure that it does that. It was such a big effort to um, detail today. And, you know, again, even in this page, right? Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Pinterest, uh, YouTube. Half of those weren't in play in 2010. So even just to get to the fact to account for everything here was pretty substantial. So. Um, that'd be a highly valuable piece of information if you're like, hey, the two things that you're not anticipating is X, which, you know, 2018 is going to require. So one of the reasons I was hoping to draw you guys into a, trap. a debate. A trap, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, you can, you can, like, if you pick someone, they have a one-year deal, correct? They don't have to, be, a year from now, they may or may not be... Is absolutely the case. It's the case with the current contract, which is it, it's one year renewal, but um, you have notice clauses if you know the world was to go left and, and they went right. This could be amended too for yeah. the next year. Oh yeah. It's the county you prefers not to change the agreement because as soon as you modify it very much then it says everybody should have a fair opportunity to bid that scope exactly. again. Yeah. So back to one of the reasons why maybe in the past it was a little bit more topical, but you're trapped in the you need to make sure that you're being served you know, to this level um, if you're entering a relationship as big as this. So do we touch on each category at least a little bit? Is that yeah. fair? So, may I think I could the thing do you think are most important? Yes. Okay. So just to get us rolling, obviously the overall section um, is trying to give some grasp of scope, a multi-million dollar uh, organization that has to interact with the county government and sunshine law, um, financial ability to advance all media pay payments. We reimburse Zender for everything. They have to front millions of dollars in the course of the year. That's pretty significant. Uh, preference by the county to not be fronting money and hope that it runs on TV or hope that it shows up in a magazine. So we, we put that service provider in the, in the firing lines. Uh, legal obligations, uh, have to have some intimate knowledge of the destination, significant perhaps. Um, and then all of the areas that you need to be proficient in, whether it's social media, creative, buying, digital. So that hopefully is the big picture. Anything jump out there to be odd or absent? Grand strategy uh, gets a little bit more specific. Uh, obviously the thoughtfulness that goes into uh, how we address leisure and niche and target audience and seasonality. Um, looking for ways to be best in class in the tourism and our, in our environment. Um, just because we find something that we want, we're not allowed to buy it. You've got to go through the whole quote process anytime that you're uh, seeking a service. So the bids, the um, Statutory requirements, got to spend pennies in certain ways. If you don't have skills as far as that, you'll end up having us in court. Uh, and then the monthly um, management, frankly, of those millions of dollars is um, sort of overwhelming at times, but uh, requires the organization serving us to have a question. Yes? On D, the equitable, uh, the quote getting the quote. Yes. Is that the agency getting the quote? It may be. So what would be a good example? We're doing a brand activation in Dallas, and we need a 40-foot custom backdrop. They might have their favorite vendor. We don't let them just get it from their favorite vendor. They have to go through the same essential procedure we do, which is to get three quotes to demonstrate our fiscal responsibility with tax dollars. So a lot of time put into stuff like that. And then, this may be scary, 
But then uh, <laughs> for any expenditure exceeding the county's requirement for procurement, like what would that be? Different levels, 1,000, 5,000, 25,000. It depends on what it is. Okay. So again, you've got to know where your behavior modifies. And we would obviously instruct somebody on that, but then they've got to, they've got to have that responsibility every day. Of the year. So let's see, that was media planning and buying. So um, again, Kate's here today and, and having somebody who is uh, focused on uh, multi-channel planning is pretty significant. Uh, negotiating for uh, added value and actually having a stated goal of 50% additional of your net media buy. Trying to have some measurables. It's easy just to say we want to be great, but wherever we could, we try to insert that. Um, proof of performance, tear sheets, affidavits with everything we do. Pretty difficult, but required. Co-op management and maintenance. So we're gonna talk about the co-op program a little bit today, but it's almost its own business. Uh, outside of day-to-day -day brand and um, 250 separate opportunities are actually trafficked and sold they're they're the point of contact with trying to convert they're doing the collections on all the fees paid by bed tax collectors um, so that's that's a job in and of itself uh, assets back and forth details lead trafficking that all goes through the agency serving our account Creative development. We have 60 plus page uh, brand standards, so that has to be used as a day to day guidance. Um, has to be revised, frankly, as we go. Um, when new creative is produced, we do expect that some of our work will be award winning, and so um, we use a flagler as an example of are we doing work at a level which you know our peers consider to be exceptional, not just passable. Um, visitor guide is another job unto itself which falls within this scope. Uh, it's an annual and we start that in late May, June to have it in December, January. So it's a six month project that's part of this. Content development, content marketing. So paid, earned, owned is a uh, dynamic relationship. Um, being able to further the brand's value through those type of efforts. Um, SEO practices, monthly adjustments to dozens and dozens and dozens of keywords that are related to uh, significant spending. Digital is 41, 42% of our total net media. Um, and then actually creating from photos, videos, infographics, imagery from scratch and deploying every week a full calendar of stuff. And obviously that's going in places like we talk, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube. Uh, responding, protocols for responding even just to, wow, I love that picture. Um, obviously response time is key. And so the agency is first up for that. We're their backup plan if things get sticky or political, but they're the front line. Uh, obviously, not just paid growth, but organic growth comes through that kind of good content context. And um, boosting, knowing when to pay to promote, when to um, serve videos through other channels. We, one of the things I've heard most about is the video that we've got serving in Southwest Airlines, that if you use their service, you probably have seen our video the last 60 days. So uh, pretty considerable. Have I lulled all of you into a coma? <laughs> Email marketing, obviously, that's pretty um, notable these days. It's uh, up to 12 leisures, um, anywhere from 8 to 12 sweepstakes, uh, multiple group sales emails that all go to different opt in lists, uh, full best practice, including A B testing for subject lines and uh, trying to hold ourselves to a click-through rate which would be considered acceptable. So it's not just a matter of pushing out a template, it's a management of the whole process. Digital, Sunshine Law first. Um, we have we conform to that. A lot of folks frankly don't. 
but we said we're not going to be a lot of folks. We're going to do it proper, so all of our socials are archived. Uh, user testing, um, website bugs, and all of the use the day-to-day -day, uh, promotional stuff. The agency touches that first. If it's platform related, there's a different uh, contractual. Uh, Agreement, which was miles currently to take care of uh, code related things and then cloud-based management of all of our assets there's a lot of money put into that so that there's a lot of standards expect that we expect them to meet and mobile app day-to-day -day usage is currently handled by the agency right here <coughs> brand activation some of you know a lot about this some of you know a little but um, the amount of work that it takes for your internal team and the agency to collaborate to make sure these things are uh, best in class and, and, and evolve is really significant and it's not something that everybody does it's not it's not an experience that most people have uh, at that level and then finally we're getting to the end um, you guys get to see some of the reports but it is significant that you've got to be able to track convey <coughs> explain and document at a super high level. Um, and then we just threw it at the end, of, and we want to be considered you know, award-winning. So uh, most most agencies at this level, of course, are very proud of their recognitions, and so we, we would expect anybody that serves us to have that stance. So how do we make that better or worse? I mean, that's about this good I'm glad that you feel that way and I'd still love to know if there's one thing that doesn't ring right for you or or there's that piece to Richard's point which is making me nervous now it's like okay what's what's 2019 scope right. what should that say well I know in my in my job description it says and all and other, and other duties are <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I think that might be captured in the actual contract somewhere <laughs> but really guys this there's there's few things that are more important than 2017, 18, 19, and 2020. So this is the backbone of it. Well, if you guys think that it is good enough for us to continue what we've been doing, I think it's a great foundation. No doubt. Okay. I do too. The only place where I would maybe think, and I don't even know how I would word this, is under the media planning and buying. Sometimes there's economies of scale. So if you're buying with other clients, then again, you already have that relationship. You're getting better rates. I mean, I know we have 50% added value, which is huge and very difficult to achieve. Um, so I don't know if there's any value. And again, I think um, I think the best rates demonstrating know? buying power through buying you know power. mass media because you and I might be the smartest agency in town, but if we can't get a rate on digital because we have no prowess, we have no leverage, right. then that's pretty simple. We know all this, we know everything's negotiable. Got it. Other than that, this is amazing. This is extremely cost comprehensive and it's very impressive to see how much the scope of work has grown under Zender's leadership. So kudos to the team, yes. kudos to Zender. This is an incredible document. Thank you very much. I appreciate you spending some extra time on that. I know that We've got lots of stuff to talk about there. That one's huge for me. So, item B. You, you don't need to make a motion on this? It will go to the TDC as is, essentially, with a couple of, um, and then legal gets their last hands on it and what they say can go out, which the scope is usually untouched, but the rest of the agreement documentation. I think we, we are unfortunately in a situation where um, in the next 12 months, we will have to reset the contract for marketing, for uh, PR, and for research. And so that's not great um, because I think that's probably a full-time job just to do those three big uh, agreements. But uh, we've got it hopefully timeline staggered so that we don't fall down too bad. Um, but it'll be, we'll be lucky if this marketing contract is in place, uh, you know, early September. More to come on that. Tom, sorry, when was yes. the, the call for RFPs? Uh, not uh, dead set yet. 
but it will probably be late April, early May. And um, the um, PR one may be as early as April 1, but I will send you guys a, a heads up when I have the final document. Okay, South Walton Skate TV. So we have public submission, and I mentioned Jack is here. I'm going to play a little sizzle video, which gives you uh, just a, a little flavor, and then introduce him and let him walk through a couple of slides. We, we allow five minutes for presentation, and I think that he'll be able to do it in about that amount of time, and then questions and conversations can proceed from there. So here is a little bit of sizzle. Um, that Jack is responsible for is the short answer. Because of traffic, they just said, hey, we'll see you over here at They say it every time. 
Um, and that's money that, that dollars that, that we, we're going to start keeping in this county by making this move um, to start running trips out of the, the Baytown uh, board. So that is something that's really, I felt, led to do and, and wanted to bring the boat over. And they've been excellent in uh, finding a spot and, and, and getting me over there. And we're going to start that process soon. Um, Real Scripts is not your ordinary charter boat. It's not what you probably envision as a charter boat. It's my personal boat. Um, it's a 52-foot luxury hazardous boat. Something that I wanted to do was offer um, people that wanted to fish, but also fish in a luxury boat. Um, it's a pretty cool deal. There are other, there's a lot of the boats out there, nicer than mine, way nicer than mine. Um, but we've never had a complaint, and the customers seem to enjoy the atmosphere of being inside, air conditioning, flat screen TVs, and and uh, stuff, they think that's pretty cool. Um, it, you know, it talks about being my wife, our storyline there. Uh, it, it speaks of Justin Martin, who is right here behind me. He's the owner of Mountain Martin Outdoor Entertainment. Has over 15 years of, of television production experience. Um, so if you're gonna use the best, you try to use the local the best, and that's, that's, that's what we've done. Um, if you'll turn to the next page, John. Sure. This talks a little bit about the network. Um, as you can read there, it's been Nielsen Radio since 2012. The key fact here is we've been approached by a large, a lot of larger networks. Destination America, NBC Sports. They, I hate to use the word they, but they did. They sent several emails trying to get us to move the show there. We looked at it, we vetted it. Uh, Justin's vetted it very well. And if you look there, the Sportsman Channel is the number one engaged viewers. That means what they see, they want to do. Because they pay for this channel. And it's stuff, when they see it, they say, hey man, I don't plan to go do that. So that's why we decided to keep the show where it is. Um, I think for our sponsors, for everybody involved, it, it keeps the customers engaged in the stuff that they enjoy doing what they see on TV. If you have any questions that I'm doing, I'm, I'll take them. It's fine. Um, whatever. If y'all see anything that just pops up, go ahead and ask me. This is additional exposure as far as um, potential, you know, people that we potentially add as far as social media. Uh, you look there at Cabela's. Cabela's has over 3.4 million followers just on just on their Facebook. Um, you can imagine the impact that we can have just with them. Uh, you look at the Sportsman Channel, they have about 700,000 um, that, that, that they have on their Facebook. Um, and just those right there are just a piece of, of what we're starting to put together. Um, we have several, uh, and I've been fortunate and, and, and made several friends with some, some guys that are pretty good knowing country music um, that have houses here. They've agreed to uh, do some guest appearances when, when their time permits, um, and, and that will that will attract eyes. Of course, they they attract eyes mostly female eyes. Um, so that's that's cool. Um, next page. This goes into the partnership details. Um, it, it both begins all trips, of course, in South Walton. Um, you can see the port where it's going to be at. Everybody knows where that is. Um, every episode can take two minutes of stuff in Walton County, I say stuff because that's the best word to use, of, of stuff that, that we want to promote. Stuff that happens in our shoulder seasons that, that we want to promote. That's what we're here to do. Y'all have done an incredible job in the prime time. There's no need any, they're coming, you know. So we, we, we're looking at the stuff in the shoulders, the seaside race that just happened, my wife was in. Um, stuff that happens in, in the fall, in the early spring, and in the winter, that still these people can come down and do. I mean, it was 74 degrees today, and you could fish today. And the only reason they didn't fish is because they don't know that you fish. Um, and bike ride and all the other uh, wonderful things we have. Uh, the logo will be visible in a minimum of 15 seconds. Uh, for show for 78 areas. I'll get to the 78 areas, how they happen in just a second. 
Um, you see the billboards of South Walton Escape. Um, we designed that logo ourselves uh, as far as the show. There's a ton of people on here with Mark and Grease. I think if y'all, uh, we, we're open to, uh, to look at anything if y'all come up with something better. Um, you look at the partnership details. Um, the first payment is to secure basically Martin Outdoor Entertainment uh, for their services. Basically, it is, it's, it's put up for their services. They have other people that come to them, want them to shoot shows. And um, I've thoroughly checked out they're, they're the best in business as far as locally that we have here around us. Um, I'm sure there's better ones, but they are far off, I promise. Um, <coughs> we can go to the next page. That's it. That's it. Okay. Um, what's the the two uh, thirty minute commercials? Yes, the two thirty minute commercials. That's what I'm fixing to get to. The two thirty minute thirty minute commercials are commercials that either y'all have in stock or thirty that, second, right? Thirty second. I'm sorry. Just make sure. I'm sorry. Yeah, that'd be a long commercial. That'd be long. Um, two thirty second commercials that y'all have in stock that will run at the beginning and towards the middle of the show. Um, if y'all don't have them, we have the capabilities of helping y'all shoot them. Um, events that's happening, uh, events that may happen that y'all want to promote um, during our shoulder seasons. Um, a lot of the fishing and stuff that we do will be in the main part of, of our activity year, our high impact year, but that is to attract eyes. And that's what we want to do is attract eyes and then, and then let them know that you can still do this in our other months. How does 78 areas happen? There's 13 original episodes. They run three times a week for 13 weeks. Then they rerun those 13 originals again three times a week for 13 more weeks. And that's where you get your 78 airs. That is a total of 1,794 minutes of airtime. That's including the two 30 second commercials and the 22 minutes of the actual show. That equates to about $83.61 a minute for national TV. Um, that's a pretty good rate. Um, a very good rate. Um, we know there's no way in 13 episodes that we're going to show this guy on. Impossible. It never happened. Um, and that's why we're saying if we reach our goals and we do what we want to do, we're looking for a long-term relationship that we can keep doing this and keep promoting our area and our shoulder areas uh, to help our destination. Most shows have a main guy sitting out there fishing and it's all about him. That's not the way the show is. The show is not about me. It's not about my crew. If you've seen, you've seen about 50% of how, what I'm on the show and that's because I want the show to be about the county. The star of the show is the county. It's not about one individual. And it's not about a boat, it's not about anything. We want to promote our beach launchers, our inshore fishermen that we have. We want to make this a platform for the whole county. And if there's anybody who wants to get on and promote what they have to help their business, we want to make this a, a wonderful platform for them to do it. Um, I'll take any questions that y'all have. Um, well, I, will it just be focused, and you touched on it briefly there, but just to clarify. Will it just be on Gulf fishing or will it be inshore fishing and river fishing as well? What we'll do is, is the way I envision the show is, is we'll take a show and um, there's the, the guy right out of, out of Baytown, we're lucky. I'm good, good buddies with him. Uh, we can take a show and dedicate to him and say, you know what, we're going we're to show some customers that we have that's come in wherever they may stay and they're going to go inshore fishing. Um, I know most of the beach launchers out there, some really good guys, some really great captains, um, and they're good at what they do. And I think it's pretty cool what they do. I wouldn't want to do it. When I see they're getting boats off in three foot seas, that's not me. Um, and, and dedicate a show to them. We want to dedicate a show to, you know, to, to both sides of that. The way the show runs is, you know, you meet, you meet the people coming in, they go fishing, um, you show the other, the bike riding, um, the, the, the other amenities in this county that they can do, John and I talked about, there's so much in this county that's just not about fishing. There's kayaking, there's stand-up paddle boards. Show the family atmosphere of what all they can do while they're here. Um, and uh, also show, show off a lot of our, our chefs. Um, 
We have some of the top chefs in the world. And that's the way I like to end the show. If it's not necessarily the family that went fishing, but at least in the show, at a restaurant, in the guy's back door back there, where he feels comfortable and he's cooking up something that he thinks is pretty cool. Um, so, you know, if, if a person's staying at Alley's Beach and they hear about a restaurant that's, that's to our west, and they're like, hey man, let's run over and do that. You know, that, that sounded like a cool spot. So it, well, it's about everything. It's not just about, you know, Gulf Shore, you know, the, the blue heart fishing. Did that answer your question? Or? Yes, sir. Thank, you. thank you. So then, Mr. Paul, how yes. do you go about identifying more of that content? Like, for example, the restaurants that you're uh, going to end the show with, uh, how do you decide? That is what I like to work with y'all on. Um, and that's why I think it's a long-term uh, term deal. I don't want to cut anybody out. I want to make this a long process to where you know this is a year. This is something that we invest in and we do. Um, it, you know, it would be a, it would be working with y'all and saying, "Hey, we're going to get in line and do it," or, or you know, "This is how we we, we can plan to do it." That's something I'm willing to work with. Um, in any way that y'all see that, that we can make it happen. Have you already strategized some of the some of it already? Have you already outlined? some of the first shows that you were thinking well, about? Well, I, I had a show already that was on, on TV. Um, and I'm not allowed to say that name again. <laughs> it was Something to Fish. Um, and it was on uh, the Sports and Channel Network. We have our website, it's still up. Um, when we decided to make this move uh, roughly a year ago, the hardest call I had to make was to the Sportsman Channel and saying, hey guys, we got a thing going, we can sit right here and do what we're doing. Um, and keep shooting it. But this is where I live. The, the best content in the world is sitting under our feet. Nobody's got this. You know? and People have been asking you for this or, as you've been out and about, or yes, how did you come I've been asked time? to move over. Yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. I've been asked okay. to move over. And it, and it was a hard decision to make when you've invested um, and you have a pretty good thing going. 1.4 million viewers in six months. Um, that's, you know, if we get a fraction of those people, uh, you know, a, a quarter percent of those people is like 4,500 families that we could add to our shoulder seasons. Um, average family spends three to $5,000 on the trip. That's a pretty good economic impact we can make right here in Walton County just in our, by promoting, using this to promote our shoulder stuff and showing them in show content to where they actually see cool stuff that they can come down and do. Maybe they don't know they can do it. Or maybe, you know, instead of going to See Mickey Mouse that went over here. Yeah. Um, did that answer your question? Yes. Okay, thank you. Mr. Cole, just so yes. I'm clear, you already have uh, an agreement in principle to continue on the network if this comes together. There was a letter um, that I emailed to John. Um, he can put it up. They're extremely excited. They did some investigation too. Um, this is Jake. He is the guy that actually uh, program acquisitions. He's head of program acquisitions. Um, you have a copy of that somewhere in there. Sorry, it's right. taking me a second. Like the little print. You need a large head on the overhead. It looks like I'm going to try it. You probably could read it for a bit if you wanted to. I have a question. When you were working with the other county, how did you guys determine which establishments would be featured? Um, that is a very unique question. Um, <laughs> I did most of it by leg work, and that wasn't how it was intended to start off with. That's how it was. Yes, the businesses that you feature, yes, do they uh, pay you to be on the. We have, we'll have a digital website, and we'll have. Um, if, to me, here's, here's the way I see it if they're already a bed tax paying customer, they, they've paid. If, if we reach this agreement, if they're a bad tax paying customer, they've helped us get to where we are today. So, so theirs would come at no expense. But if there is a business that a restaurant or something like that, we would be willing to work with them. It's not if we're not asking them for much money um, at all when we when we when we come to them. Uh, most of the, the filming's done for free when we go into a restaurant. But if they want us to promote their restaurant on the website, if they want a digital space that costs us money, we sell it to them at cost, whatever that cost is on the website. Did that actually Well, yes, but are you aware that the hotels collect the bed tax? 
from the tourists, the people that stay in their hotels. It's not money that they pay, it's tourists that pay. Them. They're just a collection. So why should they be treated any differently? Uh, they don't have to. If, if that's a decision that, that we want to make, that's fine. I didn't want to upset any and, and I'll be flat honest with you, I, I, it takes a lot to explain me some of stuff that, 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 that works. I'm not that familiar with it. But if that's the case, then we can we can we can work around that. We can say, okay, we're like a level playing a level playing field for everybody. Um, I'll take any recommendation on like that that y'all have to to uh because it may be something that I'm not familiar with. Do you have any other sponsors, partners already on board with you? Yes, ma'am. There was a there was a, a oh, okay, I didn't know if that was from your previous no, no. program. This is all new. Uh, is, for I, I actually um if you would have yes, um if you had seen um Yeti was one of the doors when Yeti's not up there, up there. Okay. Um yes. So when we made that move we've made the transition to what well, okay. yes, okay. so how many commercials will there be uh, in a 20 minutes a 20 minute segment, walk out and get two commercials. So that's a minute worth of commercial. Okay. Now, are you talking about total? Right, how many other people in 20 This, From a production standpoint, if you don't mind, I'll answer that question. There's 22 minutes. Sir, of, if you could come sure, forward, we're actually absolutely. streaming and say your name one more time. Sure, Thanks. Justin Martin, owner of Martin Outdoor Entertainment, the production company. And in a 30 minute show like this, there's 22 minutes of actual show content. So eight minutes is left to make a 30 minute run. There's approximately seven and a half minutes of actual commercial time. The other 30 seconds are taken from the network to do a little 15 second bottom of promotions for other shows on the network one night. So there's seven and a half minutes of total commercial time. Some of that is kept by the network themselves for them to sell to their advertisers that they've sold time buys to. And then the one minute would be for uh, Walton County. So, and those other minutes, in addition to what Walton County would have, would be Jack's other sponsors, advertisers, that sort of thing, um, as well as the billboards and, and other opportunities that are allowed to to generate revenue to cover the expenses of doing the production like this. I'm not sure if this would be a question for you or for a group discussion, but is there an opportunity to co-op the placement? So you have a handful, of, you have more than a handful of tax collectors, you have more than a handful of restaurants, so. These are your commercials, okay? These two commercials are yours. You would send them to us. I more so meant like when you're, the 22 minutes of on-air time for the show, when you select the home, or you know, I don't know how you select who's gonna be on your show, but that person's gonna stay probably in a beach house or a condo, and they're gonna eat at specific restaurants. Like, is there a way that we can kind of curate that and then co-op it out so yes, people can buy into that, it? No, that's the way I want it. Okay. I would want it. That's why I say this is a partnership. I want to work hand in hand with you. And you say, okay, we have um, we have 10 guests, um, we have 10 families that, that, that have signed up. What, and that's something that you can do as far as a promotional deal through, through your social media and, and your social media outlets is do a promotional deal and say, hey, we're giving away 10 spots on the national TV, what TV show when you're down here. Um, yes, I think that, yeah, yes. Yes, that was the whole thing. That's the whole intention. I, I, I would rather be work hand in hand with you to get the, the people that's on the show um, you know, than the legal out so like, and just to clarify to make sure I understood what you told me prior, as far as straight commercial, maybe Yellow Lord wants to promote bikes, he has commercials that that would be a, a separate arrangement, that those traditional 30 seconds would be available to businesses yeah. that thought that placement was in their model. And if I, or Walton, so, go ahead. Or Walton County could use well, the two 30 second commercials in some sort of a co op to well, promote. I can give an example and I think it'll paint a better picture. Okay. I worked with, we worked with you in, in the previous county and there was a family that stayed at one of our beach homes. Okay. And we were contacted by the, the TDC to have them stay there. Uh -huh. 
and that was it. We didn't pay for anything. We didn't pay for a placement or a commercial. I'm wondering is how you're going to curate who's staying where and where they're we eating. We did nothing. Of, we did nothing where they were staying. Okay. I'm trying to be. Um, so the TDC would coordinate that. If if we would like to do that, yes, ma'am. So we're willing to open the door with anything as far as customers being on here. That's what we want to show is people coming. Um, if you've seen the girl laying on the, the Getty Cooler with her legs kicked up, that happened to be um, Miss International. She heard about what we're doing. She came from Houston, Texas, came in, and she was on Miss Universe. She spoke about being on the show. It was a pretty cool, pretty cool ordeal. Um, but yes, we, yeah, I, I, I'm, I had no idea that they were staying somewhere in the PDC actually. Did. No, I just, I was just trying to understand how it all functions and yes, everything falls in place. From a production standpoint, how really would work in a best perfect case scenario would be picking up the guests on video, picking up the guests from the resort, hotel, whatever the you know place they were staying, taking them to the boat, they go out on the fishing the excursion for the day, they come back, show something fun they're doing, whether it's uh, zip lining or getting a little funny character made or getting ice cream in a little spot, and then going to dinner. So you're showing different facets besides just the fishing, and it allows for a good story, number one, that people actually watch and be entertained by. But number two, it does give more opportunities to show off South Walton and the different uh, venues here that, that we all really love, so. If you're, if you're gonna sponsor or, or showcase a chef or a restaurant, it doesn't matter where it is in South Walton, it can be at the end of the show, and that way you're not having to pay, no one has to pay for a commercial or be a commercial, you're actually gonna highlight the restaurant and slash the chef in the actual 22 minutes of the show, yes. so that's kind of saves time for other But I see what you mean, the time. concept is great, but I know like as a restaurant or a golf course or whatever, you would want to know for sure if we're comping this, I will 100% get exposure in your show. So it would almost need to be black and white for the partners. So they know that ahead of time. Equal. I mean, I'm sitting here hearing 13 med tax collectors are gonna have an opportunity to take advantage of this opportunity, have them play fair and make sure everyone has an equal and, and I can, chance. And I can kind of answer that question with the website. We can put all the, the, the med tax collectors on our website, and we can run a list of those on the show. As the show credits are going, we can run a list list of med tax collectors. Actually, That's a lot, though. <laughs> well, I mean, um, I almost think you have to have a fair way that, you know, someone is sort of, I don't want to say sponsoring the show, but supporting the show, because obviously, again, we're probably providing a comp room, as you mentioned, for that family to stay there. Again, you're, by doing that, you're going to want ample exposure and sure. having that particular bed tax collector running in the credits, and again, right. that would be to cover the resort show. And then perhaps it works like it does right now with media guests coming in, and you do the outreach, and you say, we've got media guests coming in, and you know, we need to feed them, and we need to house them, and we, who's going to yep. for the criteria, and then whoever jumps on first. And to my mind, that's the most equitable way because I was kind of along the lines of where you're coming from, just one, you know, thinking through it has to be equitable and just being a little clearer on how that content is determined because it sounds a little, little loosey goosey. Well, I, I got a question for the board. It sounds like y'all having a great discussion about this. Does it sound like Something are you all in favor of this? Do you like well, this? I'll tell you what I like about it. I like that he wants to highlight shoulder, shoulder season activities. I like that we're highlighting an activity that has traditionally not gotten any love. I mean, fishing in South Walton is very rarely talked about. I mean, let's just be honest, the other county is getting all the glory and much of the business when it comes to that. So why would our great beach fishermen, why would the folks going out of San Destin I just think this is an opportunity to showcase an activity that again traditionally has not been uncovered with the opportunity to showcase all these other elements of a South Walton vacation. So from that standpoint, I think it's great. Look, it's working for the along, along the same lines, you're right. It, it, the, my question was, have we done, has any research been done on how many folks come into South Walton and, and fish? You know, because it Probably is- so many. Right, not <laughs> many. exactly. So it's kind of, it, it is new, you know, so in making the investment, you know, we're gonna get the return because it, we are talking right. about building a new market, yes. essentially. Uh, I can semi, I'm sure he can answer it a lot more, but I have a bait and tackle store here, mm -hmm. and uh, um, it's it's unbelievable the amount of people who want to, mm -hmm. yeah. but they don't, the information's yeah. not readily right. available right. to them. Absolutely. They don't see it on TV, yeah. they don't see it as a destination place to come fish. I hope that you include the artificial reef 
projects. I forgot. And spear fishing in there. It'd be a great show. Yes. Um, but there, there's a tremendous amount of interest, and we really have. If you look beyond the beach and go to the bays and even up into the rivers, we have the best river access and best river fishing and sightseeing anywhere. And there are plenty of young guides and boats on the water who specialize in those uh, those things, even as it stand up paddle fishing, kayak fishing from the beginner to the advanced. You have them all, you know. Right Would it here. cover different facets of it? Like like you just said, like paddle fishing or yes, those you're items? You're surprised that, I was surprised when I first started this. You talk about two minutes of TV. Two minutes of TV is a lot. You can show a lot of two minutes. Yeah. You can show a tremendous amount of two minutes. <coughs> And excuse me, the two minutes that he's talking about, just to be clear so everybody knows, are the two minutes not dedicated to fishing. That's the two minutes of the little unique things, whether it's paddle boarding or you know, a bike course or a, whatever, those other unique aspects besides the fishing, which is the main portion of the show. Let's just do the first thing, I mean, the, the seaside race, you know, which they, I mean, you could literally show the seaside race and everything about it in, in less than a minute, and the people would remember that. You know, so um, you can, because that just happened, that just comes to my mind. So there's so many facets that you can show in that two minutes. You can cover a lot in each episode, um, a lot of things that go on this camera. So 20 minutes is like fishing, and only two minutes is extracurricular activities. I just, I just want to say, I personally receive, our office receives a lot of calls for fishing. Mm -hmm. Wanting to know where, because, you know, I'm on 38, I, they want to know where they can fish and do other things. and. I'm a firm believer that we have to market a diversified county here um, just to, to, you know, make South Walton stand out above and beyond the other competitors in the other areas. So I'm just, I'm all for that. When we make media buys and we go to a publication and, and we'll say, okay, what, what is your outline? for next year's mm -hmm. publications. Like, what are you going to feature in April, May, June, July? So, like, if there's a tie-in, we can mm -hmm. do something with it. Mm -hmm. Do you have anything outlined for your 22 or 13 programs that you could provide to us that you're going to feature each set, each 13 shows? Uh, One thing that's tricky about outdoor programming is some days are good days of fishing, some days are bad days. But the, the programming will be videoed between June and the end of October. And what's unique is it's going to be aired from January through uh, the end of June. So it's airing and it's really targeting that demographic on those non-peak times. So that's one thing that I think is really neat about this is, and that's one thing that's so unique about outdoor programming, is it's such a targeted demographic that you got people that are anxious for it and willing participants for what you're showing. And that's one reason it's been so successful. Also, if there are special events coming up, all we really need is about a two week notice. Say if we needed to interchange a commercial or something, there's this big special event that you guys would really like to have you know, focused on when this air date would run. All we really need is about a two week heads up and we'll be able to put that commercial or whatever else, change billboard out, that sort of thing, and to really be able to target what's going on here on the ground during that time that's actually going to be on television as well. Uh, the problem I have is I want to know more information about the content of the mm -hmm. 22 minutes of airtime. What, what are you going to be producing during that 22 minutes? I don't have a problem with us coming sure. up with a commercial, yeah. but what are you going to be featuring? That video that they showed up at the beginning? Fishing. 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 Yeah. Fishing. It's, it's, fishing. It's, it's, it's fishing, and then like I said, we end, whether he said we can start the, the, sh the show at a restaurant or we end the show at a restaurant, it won't be just hardcore our show as people pulling up fish. It's a lifestyle of, of actually getting on the boat, going fishing with your family, coming back, enjoying an, outside, an outdoor activity, whether it be zip line, whether it be a biking through a forest. If you want me to outline all 13 episodes, I, can do, I can't do that today. Mm -hmm. But as John and I had talked previously, 
I would like some input from y'all. If y'all are going to do this and spend this money, I'd like to know some stuff that y'all want to highlight. That y'all think that, that needs to be highlighted in this area. As sitting here as a marketing committee, um, what could what could we do to, to make it better? Say, hey, well, here's some things that we'd really like you to do, and that would be done through a contract of, hey, we want you to show, um, you know, so, so A, B, C, D, and E. And how many minutes of that did you want me to show? That is something I think we can work hand in hand together with John and 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 get you more defined episodes. Um, but an outdoor episode is, is not, there's nothing that we do scripted. If you're watching party down south to, to, uh, to that other stuff, we don't do scripted stuff, nothing scripted. We, we have some great funny moments on it, and, and families having good times, but we don't script anything. So it's, it's kind of hard, but um, if you go on our other website, you can watch 10 minute episodes. What is that? I can't say the first word, but the, the last two are twofish.com. Oh, Look yeah, at his so email address. Is that is it www? Yes, ma'am. Okay. So the primary focus of the show is it's a fishing show, of course. So um, it'll be different types of fishing. Um, Jack can elaborate more on that. But basically, this trip is focused on this type of fish, which is better this type this time of year. The next episodes different species of fish better this time of year, so on and so forth. Kind of change things up. That leads me to my next question. So you talked about the filming schedule being June through October, which I assume is dictated by fishing seasons, but you may know June and July is not a good time mm -hmm. to be working with partners in this county. Mm -hmm. You're like up to our ears and sure. guests and sure. uh, running very high occupancy rates. And wow. so being able to accommodate a family at that time, being able to give you our undivided attention, that's not sure. Funny. Is, is there any wiggle room or flexibility within sure. that? Absolutely. Schedule? That's, okay. that's the projected. So there, yeah. we've got plenty of room, as long as, honestly, we've been from the production house guy here, as long as we have the first episodes that need to go to the network to air the 1st of, of January, mm -hmm. as long as we have those filmed and edited about a month, so as long as we have them before December got started, then we're okay. okay. So we've got some little... Yeah. Okay. Okay. You could wait to move that back in August, September, October, 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 yeah. August, September, August. October. And to be honest with you, I think it works to the the goal of, of the committee and what everybody wants for the area. And honestly, it makes it easier from a production standpoint. If we have a bullet point of, look, priorities 1 through 10, and we know, hey, these are the things you guys want, honestly, that makes our job easier. Because we know, hey, check 1 through 10, we're good, make a good story out of it, the airtime's there really good time in the projected and really targeted market is there so that way everybody wins. Well, um, let's, let's figure out how to move forward here. I did have one other question, John, and that is right now or, or have we in the last couple of years made any type of similar investment in television programming? Uh, there is nothing budgeted uh, remaining in this current year. Uh, we have done two that would be relative uh, food network uh, we just aired some of the work uh, fourth season um, subsidized by visit Florida pretty substantially and of course Emerald Lagazzi's uh, the lead on that and the other one would be NBC Sports with the Golf Channel again um, highly subsidized by visit Florida and then Matt Janela's their um, morning drive which is a substantial show was here this year and aired. Uh, besides those two, um, there was Atlanta Eats. Culinary, again, rates very high on the um, influencer for travel. And, um, and you all know, besides that, our TV spots um, are budgeted to air and zip code extensions in specific communities as opposed to anything national. So the, the mention of Food Network and Cooking Channel slash Right, Food Network, Cooking Channel, same thing, and uh, NBC Sports were the only two national uh, features that we've done. Can you give us the um, uh, idea of what that dollar investment was for the TVC? For the those, for Golf Channel was forty, um, and the Food Network uh, has been have been reduced down to ninety. Um, 
and that appeared six times on Cooking Channel. I, I, well, it's a, it's a long answer, but the main episode appeared six times on Cooking Channel, appears six times on Food Network, and then there's segments that appear on two additional episodes, so it gets a little and is that math. Is with the TDCK did Visit Florida? That was what we paid. So they paid on top of that as well? How much do we spend on an activation? Uh, anywhere from 45 to 95. So talk to us about the financials. I mean, are we evaluating something that we can't even look at until 2017? Well, currently it wouldn't be in a budget, so uh, a TDC would have to have a financial review of uh, an expenditure from unanticipated revenues and or uh, you know, some sort of a budget transfer. Obviously, we're starting budget reviews for fiscal 17 RFPs are starting to be trafficked, um, but that's not something that gets officially approved until you know August, September um, for, for fiscal 17. So, and, and I've answered as many of Jack's questions as I could straightforward and, um, you know, beyond the idea and the, and the feedback about um, fishing as a lifestyle, um, you guys know that there's a lot of the planning, you know, our day parts, uh, schedules, budgets that that are um, probably harder than the decision of uh, creative and and content. So, um, don't have a lot of easy plug and play answers for you, but I hope that answers what you at least asked. So, what are you looking for us for today, then? I mean, there's yeah, a genuine yeah. interest in sure, us right. pursuing yeah. this. Um, we're just trying to figure out, can we afford it? And we want to get a comfort level with the details that we've kind right. of talked through. Uh, I think to take this to the TDC, it's going to have to be cleaned up a little bit. Exactly. We're going to need some content and some some sort of process uh, how it works on selection. Yeah, uh, put together the show, lay the shows out and look at some content and uh, from what I know of the TDC and trying to get something like this executed, see if you can sharpen the pencil a little bit on the 150. As I was going to say, how do they get and, that number? Is that a, a, you know, is there a tier structure? I don't know. But it, yeah, and I don't know how that how your numbers work or how that deals. I just have seen these things come and go through the, and, and get denied as well. You know, through this process, and I think that. This is the starting point for sure, and it seems like that you have everybody's attention, and that every I think everybody feels this is kind of the South Walton life uh, deal, and it, and it is as much as fishing is South Walton life. So um, that's I think my two cents as far as taking this, getting this to go to the next level, is getting some uh, content and some sh the shows laid out, the content, and giving us the ability to say, well, we need to see these, these you know. 10 or 13 things in the show. When, when you say content, you want us to go shoot? No, no just no, a, no, just no, a, no, a no, script. No, 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 a shoot, a script yeah. that you would go, whatever, say you're doing, whatever show, you have a script of the things you're going to try to, say you're going to try to catch a shark and you're going to be here and here and here. Yeah. And so, kind of lay the shows out that way. To, to make it your easy, restaurant partner yeah, and a hospitality to, partner. To, and, you've got your template yeah. there. So, to make it easy, you know, like I would just recommend go ahead and, and outline as tight as you can, like four shows, okay? okay? And then it's like, you know, X amount of minute, we're going to go here. I mean, be as specific as you can. So, and showing the diversity of the Walton County fishing offerings. Then we're going to do, we're going to be, you know, I mean, you, however you storyboard or do your scripts or whatever, and then we're going to do this, and then we're going to go to a restaurant to be determined, you know, sure. and that type of thing. Just get it tight so that it's just a little easier to kind of explain and to, to show folks. Just uh, you know, script it it's out really perfect, it's it's really perfect for a storyboard uh, with a script, absolutely. you know, which is what we do all the time, sure. video, yeah. making video and, and yeah. things like that. And, and then maybe even beyond that, if it's four to six shows, have beyond that other strategic options. You know, this, these are other, you know, for future, what we can also right. do. Um, and sure, just strategize also, a little bit with the restaurants, the activities, right. the fishing, 
places. Yeah, well, beyond, I think beyond the beach is a big buzzword here yes. right now, and ecotourism. And if you could, this is perfect for beyond the beach because you yes. can show the whole yes, county. Right. Right. The diversity is, is monumental. And I'm going to go back to outlining what that process is for selecting partners. Everyone's highly competitive in this market. How are they going to have you know their business showcased? I think you kind of need to have a plan on sure. how that selection process will work. Well, and I, I'll interject there that I wouldn't um, stand in front of the TDC Council uh, with a scenario similar to this without conveying that we would follow the same protocols that we use with Southern Living, with Golf Channel. There's a thousand good partners to have. You just have to, somebody has to make some decisions about how to be judicious and cover East and cover West and cover big and cover small. And I, I hope that we've earned that trust, even though it's a, it's a tenuous one in that you wouldn't spend money like this unless you know you're hitting attributes and you're hitting touch points and you're hitting neighborhoods. <coughs> Um, that is a family, not a preference. So, so you hear what he's saying in it being geographic, right. you know, for the whole county, really. Sure, absolutely. And if you could put together a video just like that one that shows <laughs> South Baldwin to awesome. pay for the team, yeah. like, play for them, it would help as well. Yeah. Okay. Oh, that might be going a little too I'll much. touch a little bit on the number. Somebody asked a question, we didn't get an answer as far as how we know that number. Um, there's several reasons um, for what we do and the high quality TV that we shoot. That's about a fourth of what it costs with our drones, uh, our underwater cameras, um, the, the time, the running the boat, the, everything that we do. Um, and that is a, a pretty close number to what um, most top end partners are, are at in this industry. That, that's getting this much air time. Um, 1700 to 94 minutes of air time. So that brings up a good point. Maybe a tiered sponsorship proposal because, again, what we can talk about is we can sponsor an event. We can't underwrite production. We can't, this is a marketing organization, so they can sponsor. So, again, looking at what other sponsors are paying, again, how you tier that, maybe at this level, just ideas for, again, the right options at this level. TDC would get 130 <laughs> second commercial, whatever, for this price, and again, this is what the sponsorship would look like. Versus right. at this level, 150K, you're getting two 30 second spots. Again, maybe just outlining that sponsorship opportunity in a little more detail. You know, for this okay. So, um, make a suggestion. We spent a lot of time on this. We do need to move on. But if y'all feel compelled to make some sort of a motion that perhaps you're recommending that staff continue to work with this opportunity to detail uh, the traditional um, considerations for a sponsorship, um, that this is an item that could then be brought forward to the TDC. Well, or something that to that extent. Continue the traditional detail. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't think I can actually. But I would, uh, for the staff to continue to work with and uh, gather more information on this marketing opportunity. On this opportunity. I second. I second. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Uh, Aye. Can you oppose? Okay. Thank you very much, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Guys. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. To jump right to the next one, um, draft media spend. Can't even read what's in front of me at this point. Uh, looks like this to start. So uh, this is the current year that we're in, 31% print, 41% interactive. And we would propose to essentially um, replicate that. I, I recall having a pretty good conversation in here last year about, well, maybe we just keep going more and more digital and less and less print. And I think it was you, Ms. Laufen, who said, why isn't what you're doing working? And I said, I think it's probably working pretty good. And so we did hold the proportions in this last fiscal year. And so in conversation with Zender in our office, we kind of felt like maybe that's the starting point again, is that it doesn't feel like there's a, a real suffering or a real uh, struggle one way or the other. Um, there was a, a solid recommendation from Zender that we consider, um, sorry, 
just to um, reference what those percentages equal, about $300,000 per 10%. So it gives you a little bit of uh, perspective and it doesn't include beach safety outdoor. Uh, you also recall that we have reserve spend. And so in fairness, we weren't just showing you the traditional net media, we thought we should show you all of the net media that was funded by the reserve plan. We would hope to get permitted to, to do another 10% uh, funding out of the bank. Uh, and if we did that, you can see that this last year it was very heavy uh, that reserve spending into interactive. Now that interactive often uh, delivered video, which then people were seeing on um, pseudo TV essentially in this day and age in some respect. So it's so maybe a little misleading, but um, we would uh, want to continue that to be, to be frank, what we've done through that reserve spend and how the prowess that you can buy YouTube views and that you can get real digestion of content, not just a, a pretty picture of a content, which we're going to get to that conversation. So, um, does that apply to the gentleman we were just talking to? That's what I was just thinking. I was like, so out of this like reserve spend? Could it I mean, that's straight like TV. Um, no, no well, or does, or does, it, does there a crossover? Does that also get played on YouTube? There it would be TV. It would be TV. I mean, what he's selling is access to broadcast to every household in the U.S. through you know, the Sportsman Channel if you get that in your household. Um, but in theory, we have about $600,000 of reserve money available for TV it, based on 16%? Well, that it wouldn't be reserve money. Okay. Um, in fact, you're seeing 21% would be what uh, we basically spent today and what we would propose to spend in TV next year. Uh, and reserve wouldn't um, really impact that a whole lot, that pie chart. It skews the rest of the percentages. When you put it in one bucket, it makes it look more minimal, but doesn't change the total amount. But um, obviously, that's something that, um, you know, if that became a uh, mission, then that could change things a percentage point or half a percentage point. Um, 150 is no small amount of money, but it isn't, you know, in the, in the grand scheme of things, enormous. Uh, so, as we've done before, really giving reasons behind interactive and print, why we do what we do. Uh, the television back to again that is basically brand, 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 um, and the driving value. And the print, you know, uh, always considering publications that we feel align with uh, sections that are covering travel or beach, uh, household incomes that continue to be extremely high, uh, and proven lead generators um, is certainly always an issue. You've got group sales. Obviously, we have experience with many, many publications, and there's always more, and you can only do so much. And so, instead of trying to do everything, we really work hard at trying to do the things that we know have the biggest return on an investment. So, the endless amount of hours have gone into that. Uh, interactive, 60 shoulder, 40 still supports core, but of course we're putting it in markets that are changing and growing for us. Uh, digital publishers, that list is a short list because there's probably about 250 more behind it. For, for what we know, is that interactive 60-40, is that still relative or should there still be, should there be more shifts? Well, um, keeping in mind that the reserve campaigns, which are relatively new, two, two times we've done that, um, a large Part of that money goes only into shoulder season, and then the other part of the money goes only into markets where we're seeing the most growth. So we're we're not placing any of that money in Atlanta, for example, uh, for the emerging markets. Okay. So it really gets spread around pretty strategically, um, and we're definitely never putting more money in core. It's always a it's always a departure from core, trying to spread into shoulder and events. And not, not drastic, however, because again, brand value is certainly massively important. So there's television, 100% of it is in shoulder currently, uh, trying to get into the right households. Um, 
in the right places. And obviously, television is generally speaking pretty expensive, and so it's not like we're buying broadcast here at this time. And then radio is basically the same thing, 85% shoulder. <coughs> Now, um, one thing to debate briefly here today was outdoor. Um, and I'll maybe even ask Kate to give me some 30, 60 seconds in there. But um, that opportunity keeps changing, right? The digital boards and the dynamics and being able to put it in a literal neighborhood where you know your consumers are. So being that we don't have any true mission on that right now. The thought was maybe two or two or three percent would be budgeted so that those opportunities could be considered in those affluent neighborhoods at certain times that you think that you can impact shoulder, you think you can impact opportunity. So is that that is that the short answer yeah. or what I missed? That answers it. I mean, we haven't had Al Gore as a component to our mix, you know, for a while. So this is something new for us that we haven't had in the in here that you know we could consider next year if the opportunities were there. Um, you know, based on bales and different flight dates and locations, you know, all of that would play into it. But we wanted to, you know, at least maybe have the option if that's something that we were interested in. And I do like the, the the first bullet, which is if we're doing a significant spend to push. TV in an emerging market in a shoulder season to have a billboard on a area where we think those households that have been served that TV commercial might see the brand might see an attribute. Uh, hard to argue with that if you have the wherewithal to be able to do it. So I think the multiple impressions are key. Like you said, you've got to have it. They've got to see it three or four different times for it to resonate with them. So if we can put it in those markets. And that's the simplest reason that Zender advised it is it's one more opportunity to infiltrate. Um, and again, the, the desensitized consumer is a huge problem um, that you see it once and then it just goes into the drone. Especially uh, so here in markets too, where they're seeing traffic, you're just like staring at the yeah. <laughs> And it's something fun and catchy, like come to the beach. Yes, yeah, yeah, exactly. Like so the yeah, truth is, if, if you guys are generally open to that, um, it really, again, it's not such a huge thing that it is going to take just from one bucket. We would just take droplets from all the other places to be able to fund that. So we're really not changing the mix. We're adding a very minor um, layer. Yeah. Anything else in there that jumps out? Okay. So if you think that we're still being as wise as we were last year, um, a motion to the extent of the media spend either including or not including outdoor as an option is something that you're recommending staff taking forward. Uh, and again, we do need to do that in advance of the entire budget, the entire media plan so that we can, um, we, and we're, we're talking about it here, where the co-op placements would be mapped out and eventually offered. And so um, I think that's the most likely, from what I'm seeing faces, the most likely two motions is with or without, but that take forward this mix as part of the co-op and then the eventual budget. Media plan, sorry. Make a motion to continue with the current media allocation as set with a small sliver being appropriated to outdoor in target markets that coincides with other programming. Can I clarify something Please. before the second's made? Um, even if we do make the motion and approve it, what actually gets allocated to outdoor still has to be approved and go through the process. TDC is going to have to make a decision on the actual media plan and the budget affiliated with it, and then the Board of County Commissioners are going to have to make uh, acceptance of that co-op plan, and then eventually acceptance again of the entire budget. So, and yeah. it, and yes! <laughs> yes! And is, that, is that outdoor referred to just in market, or is that outdoor? Just outdoor. Just outdoor. Okay. Brand advertising in those select 
people are sitting in traffic and now maybe these dogs that you had, they still have to be in traffic. That for a second was awesome. I second it. You can't. You already seconded it. Any further discussion? My comment is that PR agencies, and I'm sure they are, but whatever money that we're putting into these publications, specifically that they're targeting those for editorial, right? We are, um, and again, the brand activations are all looking at where the spend, you know, um, might be multiplied. Uh, we just got back from New York. I didn't get into an update with PR. Um, we're about to launch a new uh, RFP for that. Um, the New York trip, uh, uh, the visit Florida portion, I give it a B minus. Uh, our efforts, I give an A. Uh, had some really fascinating uh, conversations with Cooking Channel and Travel Channel and Condenast and a lot of really great brands. And I, I would definitely get a little more into that under the content versus context. Um, but yes, Sorry, we, maybe a different section, but we I keep trying to overlap all those things. If it if it's not in an attribute family right now, we're not doing it. So whether that's PR, whether that's billboards, whether that's shoulder season, they all fall under that strategy of beach. Shopping, dining, culinary, eco exploring, and if you're a publication like the Lifestyle Channel who wanted to do, you know, a visit here, we, we turned them down because they wanted to talk about things that didn't relate to our brand's attributes. So, any further discussion? Oh. Oh, I just wanted to say that with you know we are sharing which publications we're in with the PR firm. Um, so that they can target them as well. But in addition to that, with our paid efforts, you know, the added value often includes advertorials where you're still, you're getting editorial in the form of an advertorial um, that's added value. So we're getting that, you know, that content there without it being our brief that. Yeah, I'm not sure there's a single buy that doesn't include uh, it's two, three, and four or more. Purse. So yeah, right. these guys are uh, the best I've ever seen at that. Anybody else? Okay, let's uh, vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Okay, motion carries. Okay, so moving pretty quickly, uh, the most recent visitor tracking study was fall that we have not shared with you. So obviously, uh, 870 interviews conducted by uh, Downs and St. Germain. I don't think there's a shock in any of these numbers. However, I'll say uh, we continue to love to see household income dramatically go up, which is, we hope, in part of what y'all are doing as operators and what we are doing to try to surgically reach households that um, are here. Spending up 16% is incredible. Uh, you're still seeing a high first time visitor. so. Despite that our intent to repeat is about 96% over quarter over quarter, you're still losing those people who can't repeat for one reason or another, and we're replacing them with really good consumers. Uh, there's, there's not a, we can't talk about that enough. Um, and you're seeing some of those numbers on the um, room nights increase, but the TDT collections overall, which is you know directly to the economy of 13%. Say it every time I mention this number, it's not 13% more people, it's 13% more spending. Uh, and again, further delving into females, uh, where they're coming from. Atlanta's still uh, king, especially in the fall. Probably the biggest gap I remember seeing for a quarter is, is this one, that Atlanta's so dominant still. Uh, but the states that we rely on, Tennessee, Alabama, Texas, Louisiana, are right behind them. And where are they staying? 77% are staying in a traditional rental. 10% uh, are staying in a um, standard uh, format hotel motel. And drive market still really big. 21% um, knew they could fly, but still drove. And of those who flew, half of them are going to DCP now, which I think is one of the more solid numbers that I've seen in a long time. And length of stay, um, we skewed a little bit, so it's nice that a research firm kind of got the long-termers out of there, early, early snowbirds, 4.3 is a decent number. And again, why are they here? It's the same attributes over and over and over. Relax, family, uh, life's traditions, and 
a routine that they want to keep. So uh, there's your 96% intent to repeat. So uh, we may have some flaws, we may have some challenges, we may have some traffic, we may have a bunch of things, but 96% of people appreciate it. And then here is um, almost relative to the conversation we had earlier and some of the other things that are going on in the county. What's important to people here? Uh, white sand and turquoise water are important, and they consider us to have an exceptional uh, delivery of that. Comfort, <coughs> pleasantry, beauty, family, service, traditions, um, very, very high. And there's your spend again, um, sort of enormous. And six months or more, that's back to the big bell curve that we all used to see 10 years ago before everything destabilized is it's planning, planning, planning to come here. But sure it's nice that you've got 26% that are still doing it on an impulse. I think that's maybe, in my opinion, more about the fact we have a volume of people. We have steady 12-month business that's coming. So you have a lot more opportunity for diversity. And then lastly, uh, where are we, they getting information? Still word of mouth, still uh, Google runs the world but there's a lot of good sources in here. I don't think you're surprised as who these people are and what they think of us. It's pretty normal. 91% consider going to only one of the 16 beach communities, which is interesting because it feels like we're pretty mobile once we're here, but people want to find a home and stay in it and walk and be in their own place. And then what do they do when they're here? And I almost pulled this up when we were talking about fishing, um, but we spent plenty of time on that. Um, restaurants, beach, relaxing, shopping, family time, cooking are huge percentages on what they did. And then there's more. There's fishing, golf, <coughs> parks, spas. Um, so I, I don't think that's a small uh, influencer on where we put our efforts, uh, but maybe it's very debatable. And where have they been in their lifetime if they were a fall visitor? Probably pretty normal, although I would suspect Rosemary Beach, if we went back, has constantly grown a percentage point or two to become the number five in front of some other places that have even more history. So on and on households, we know we're, I mean, look at that, 48, 65% are six-figure income. I think that's what we hope. And then there's your household income of last year to this year, 118 to 130 is a kind of a wow. Anything else jump out of there that changes your mind or <laughs> makes you crazy? Good team. Good team. Uh, last one, it doesn't have materials. And I really hope that each one of you maybe have something to say. Um, really, for me, it goes back two years with this team. And I think we have some of the best content um, naturally occurring. And I think we share some of the best content in the world. Our pictures, our sunsets, our attributes, our towns are gorgeous. But um, the Google stat, which I think was given at one of the headquarters we were in California, that in the history of mankind to the year 2003, that amount of content, the world's content, is now trafficked every two days. So there's an awful lot of folks who think content is dead. It's kind of a dramatic uh, issue. But that context is really uh, the adjustment that's happening in this world, which is if you're not telling a story, if you're not contact, connecting with somebody, if you don't have empathy between what you're talking about, it doesn't matter. It just goes into the numbness of that kind of delivery. So we were struggling on that. And then being in New York was interesting because uh, unsolicited, most of the major brands shared that that's their struggle right now is uh, Cooking Channel was an example. They're like, it doesn't matter if the chef's got the best recipe and he's a superstar. Um, the shows that are working are the people that can connect through the camera and you feel like they're speaking to your life. It's in context for something that's happening with you. Those are the shows they're trying to figure out how to push. I think that's what we all got from their presentation. Yeah, they did a really good job at that and, and um, they're they're trying to hit that nail on the head. But it's the same thing for Condé Nast. They're like, you know, the roundups and what's happening in the advice is great. We're trying to figure out how to tell a story that touches somebody's heart. And we, we maybe have all lost that in the chase for content. 
And so somebody asked me recently, I, I don't get it, what are we talking about? And I said, content is in Seaside, there's a cute Airstream trailer that has some of the best juice that you'll ever have, and the woman that runs it is a pleasant, intelligent person, and that's great content. The fact that she grew up in remote Alaska as a classically trained ballerina, <laughs> decided to chuck her whole life to move to a completely different world and figure out if she could be successful some other way and has now got a business that works, that has launched a farmer's market in a community that, that cares, is part of her local um, activism and has traveled to India several times to figure out if she can be a better person in, in, in this lifetime. It's like, okay, those are completely different efforts. And so we spend every day trying to jam this great content and gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. But when we're in New York City and we're listening to those people tell us how they're trying to figure out um, how to abandon some of the content effort and figure out how to do context, it was really eye-opening to hear them struggle like we're going. One more sunset picture, is that what we should do? I mean, it's getting a lot of likes. Um, so you can Google it, content versus context, and find about 200 people freaking out in some white paper someplace. But I wanted to know if you guys think that's crazy talk, or if you are already recognizing that, or if you have any perspective, because it's not um, just a take a left turn, it's a change an ocean liner uh, and go in a different direction. For me, it kind of reminds me of like in the sales world, the features and benefits relationship where you don't want a salesperson that just rattles off your attributes and you need to make a connection with your planner or a connection with your visitor that talks about what ultimately comes back to them in the way of experience and benefits that relate to their needs. You know, it's that finding that magic that lives in the space of who is my audience and what do they want and why do they want it versus just saying, I've got 600 rooms with great balconies. Okay, that's great. You can find that in a brochure online. But it's evolving that further to understand, you know, that a convention or, or a guest will have 50% of their time spent on their own. So how do you spend what the value of the in-room experience is that dials into what the attendees will get at, at, in the way of a takeaway? So to me, it, it, it sounds like it's just a matter of how you're taking the same content but just evolving it so that it's creating that story or that connection that you're talking about the same way that in a group sales discussion we would take a feature and turn it into a benefit. To me it's, it's just kind of uh, you know content 2.0 taking up that one extra level to and, and I think quite honestly there are a lot of destinations that would really struggle to be able to find that sweet spot. We've got it in spades here. To me it's just a matter of how we're telling the story and creating the, the presentation of the content. It's still content, obviously. Yep. It's just how you're positioning the content to touch a certain core audience or a demographic or um, you know, based on why or how you're telling the story and presenting that content that ultimately creates the context that you're looking for. It should stand on its own, I guess is what I'm saying. And, and that's not to dumb it down or make it yep. over, overly simplified, but you know, it's the same way you need to understand your customer, you need to understand your group, convention, decision maker, whatever, what's important to them. They may not give two hoots about the balcony in the room, but if you spend your whole time talking about it, you miss that opportunity and it becomes noise and content that just goes up on a shelf. So that's my two cents on it. You were going somewhere? Uh, <laughs> everything he just said. <laughs> well said, and I don't uh, think it's well a radical said, yeah. switch. I it isn't. Yeah. It's a serious matter, but it's, it's not as though we're, we're broken. Absolutely. We do really well. We have started to continue to redirect, to say things that make you feel something and, and love and personal. And even the video content is all really about storytelling Absolutely. instead of just attribute delivery. And so it's like, I can see myself having that experience. And so and we're doing it. It's so fast. Everybody should enjoy a sunset yeah. at the beach. So you yeah. still connect with that moment. Translate, you transport yeah. them. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's a story, but with a connection. Right. It's a story that, where, you know, where you're, like Richard said, where you're meeting a need, that's where you're going to be successful. And if somebody, whether it's an emotional need or an experiential need, that that's what they're going to connect with. Right. So it's not leaving the story out, but it's also pulling out those little gems and those little, 
you know, those unique characteristics that um, might just click, like that little bitty thing might click with someone that you, you don't even know about. So um, doing it across multiple platforms, to me, is, is, is more of a challenge because, you know, it has to be messaged and massaged and written for each one individually. And so that's, that's also important. And that's, and you're not going to to make sense, and I won't go into the little explanation. We call it a spider, which is you have a story, and then you have all of these limbs that either reach a platform or the characters or what the drama is or what the conclusion might be or the surprise and how do you, I mean, we're talking about trying to do something that's leading edge in the U.S. because everybody right now is like, yeah, my content's really good, but I'm trying to find the sweet spot. And so we're, we're it's intimidating because we are a massive content machine um, and you can't abandon what we're doing. But I think the other thing that's hard for me is I know where some of our weaknesses are, which is brand awareness, uh, unaided awareness. And so I think you have to tell people what your attributes are if they don't know you or they're not sure who you are. Well, if all we're doing is making sure attributes is the most important thing, hey, we're South Walton, here's where we are, this is what we are, 16 beaches, that's not context. So we, we can't stop working on awareness because we're weak in that. That's time and, and hopefully talent. But this is becoming pretty uh, hot. It's always, it's been growing, but it is, it's on fire right now for a lot of big brands. And again, Condon asked, wasn't really interested in telling the story of South Wall. They, wanna, they wanted to find um, some life-changing thing, person, you know, experience. And then they can tell the story about the destination through that heart. And it's like, that's a lot more challenging to deliver that. So, I think if you look at the last 10 years, there's so much information that's thrown at us and it becomes almost overwhelming and so I think what you're seeing is consumers returning to a place where they can relate identify and or be moved on an emotional level without exactly. their seeing because it's just become you know this tunnel of garbage that you know gets thrown at even you if it's pretty it's, like, it's still you're in a tunnel it's just noise and you have to decide what you're gonna stop pause or pay attention to and if you can find that then I think that's where you're successful but I think if we look at if we can equate brand our brand pillars to our content I think that we're already doing better than most in the way of context because our return visitor ratio is, you know, 95%. Yes. So uh, again, versus a Detroit or a Boise or another place, yeah. they're probably struggling a little bit more than we are because our brand already creates the context on its own. If that makes sense. That's somewhat reassuring, honestly, because we spend all day, you know, attributes, attributes, attributes. And you look at me and go, oh, maybe this isn't in context. But your point is, our stuff's so good, it does touch people's heart. So our content is more easily convertible. So that makes me feel a little bit better in that we're, we don't have as far to adjust as maybe somebody whose content is mediocre. Just my two cents. Oh, that's okay. We are. We are. We are. We are. I can chime in here because I mean, this, I could talk about this stuff all day. I love this so much, okay? But uh, we are talking about a mix here because we are a destination. Folks are always going to be seeking information. Yes. There's your content, okay? Yes. It's compelling. So that it, it starts becoming, you know, context. But my litmus, litmus test for context is always like, why should I care? Why should you care? You know, and I think if you can answer that, then you're there. You know, then it's like this is why you should care. And there's your context right there. There, that's where you get that engagement that you know converts to what we want. Like that. Kind of and maybe there's a difference between your first time visitor and someone who's heard our message before. Mm -hmm. They might want more of that part, but like that I want to go to the place in Seaside now because I didn't know that about her, you know, and I've lived here forever. Um, so someone that they, they need a new angle after some time. And that's not only the leisure market, but it's the meetings market. I just got um, Preview Magazine, which is the top meeting destination. Um, magazine, they're running an article in April, May, and it has nothing really to do with meeting. It's what's to do when you're here. Mm -hmm. And so their their content is um, the dune lakes and stand up paddle boarding and the peacefulness of the you know the experience. So it, it goes those lines too. Okay. Cool. Any more thoughts on that? That was really good. Appreciate it. 
kind of feedback. I'm going to see if I can go out of order momentarily in the old business, which is uh, the third item here. And I have to unfortunately let that spool for a minute. We'll see. Um, Maybe I won't go out of order. Um, water tower. <laughs> um, so we went forward um, after the last meeting and talked to the TBC Council. And as you might expect, I think generally their comments were, well, we understand $144,000 investment. We understand the, you know, that there's artwork now. We understand we need to consider something. You know specifically what do you want to do where what are the options and so one of the things we were asked to do is go back and determine whether or not just the top globe could be which we talked about in here could be repainted and so we're like okay well we'll take it a little further because we didn't really want to go anywhere because it's unbudgeted and so um, we got essentially the same feedback from them as we got from you and so what you have in front of you is a couple of really down and dirty uh, scenarios the existing tank with uh, its existing background just changing white on the logo that's actually a pretty reasonable approach and that would be probably the ten thousand twelve thousand dollar option to uh, fix just the live space with white instead of a full color logo that actually in my opinion works um, and you'd have six more years uh, of consideration if you did that and so you're seeing a couple of those options there. Um, obviously, we talked about the ribbon or a banner, um, and maybe that's a little bit more expensive because it's more than just the live space. It's 360, but it's still not going to be 144,000. So that was um, produced, and then I need to give an update. Uh, Stan has had some conversations with Mark Hudson at uh, Sandestin, and there was an inquiry made if we weren't going to uh, put our new logo our proper logo on that water tower for the six years that remain in the term um, you know perhaps that company has interest in doing so and this is only talk from what i understand but there was a potential proposal and dan if i'm telling it wrong or i'm not supposed to be telling it you can stop me but um that Sandestin perhaps suggested that if we were to step aside and they were to go on that space, that the prorated amount that was left on our investment would be uh, reimbursed to the county. So let's just say that's $85,000 if you were to look at a 10 year investment and you had six left. Um, so that, that came up, I was a member of that yesterday and asked to share that with you. That that's a solution in a way. Uh, we don't have an incorrect brand emblazoned on a water tower, and we're basically done with that um, outdoor advertising. We would still have the water tank that could be done as you saw in the photos. So everybody's interested in what maybe this group thinks about that. Um, and then obviously we'll be back to the TBC again to see if one or more of these things are directions or budgets. There's half our fishing show right there. <laughs> Well, if I'm seeing Destin, obviously I want my logo on it, but if I'm South Walton, that's like one of our biggest advertisements when you come into the area. Yeah. Market. So. Which is obviously why somebody, you know, invested the money originally. So it's an interesting situation. It's dry when you first come in here. It's big. Yeah. What color would the tank be with a white logo? Existing color. Is that okay, so because it looks really dark, it looks, really dark. It looks black, and I'm like, oh, I don't want black. It, um, yeah, it's, it's not an appealing color in any case to me. But the white on it, at least, is uh, I would say a significant improvement from the turquoise. Yeah. Is it prudent to convey the TDC's sentiments on this, General? Well, maybe we can talk it through a little bit first. Bit more. I mean, I'll just say I think that mud color is atrocious and nasty. <laughs> I agree. I want that logo on top of it. Ten thousand dollars. I'll pay you ten thousand dollars. Not do that. <laughs> so if Saint Destin took it back, would they? Would you? Would you know, change I'm that color? Yeah. I don't know what that design would look like. But it would be only the Saint Destin messaging. Probably. There, there's a strong sentiment, not necessarily a majority. 
on the TDC board to uh, when they get this information, or uh, I sit on that board, when we get that information, they're going to, some of them are going to push to let this thing go, give it back. Uh, I think that's just easy to say that that's easier than struggling through this and talking about expenditure. Yes, I did, I did uh, make a point that our board was in favor of pursuing it and, and looking at what the options were. And that we felt, uh, I think that was not popular. Safe to say. <laughs> well, I, I kind of said that in rebuttal to uh, what was going on, but <laughs> well, you know, we talk being such about being such a strong in market message, and that's us something that we've gone back to again and again. And it's you know on the west side, you know, it's close to the. I guess it's probably seven, not six miles from the, or maybe four or five miles from the county line. Yeah. Um, I will say that one of the things I don't think that I did very well is to anticipate or counteract the sticker shock. When people see a number like 150 earlier today or 144, they're like, oh my God, I would never do that. And it's like, we're not, we're not normal, right? We, we, we buy an a insertion into Southern Living Magazine that costs $144,000, one insertion. So I don't think I did a very good job to the TDC Council to break it down over the years or compare it to other outdoor because it's probably pretty affordable. It, it is. Yeah. Uh, uh, so that's outdoor, my fault. Yeah, if an outdoor board, a billboard, a viable one is 22000 in this market right now, or a really good, strong board. You look at that over 10 years, it's 20, 200, uh, over $200,000 right there. So 144 starts looking, right. give it some perspective there, give it some context. Yeah. Well, the raise awareness is the number one thing that is a struggle. You know. I concur. I was going to say the same thing, Sarah, that we it's need that brand awareness in this county. And we don't, I just, I feel like South Walton is going to lose a lot if we don't, if we don't continue this. And the people that are, they see it, they expect it, whether they, you know, think about it you know, aggressively when they're going by it, but they subliminally do. And um, I don't know, I, just, I feel like it's a very viral in-market uh, reminder of who we are and what this county is. Well, and, this I, and I think it's fair to say that we're, we have baggage, right? If we were talking about this, it's a blank water tower. We have an opportunity for 10 years to brand it. This would be a different conversation probably, but we're stuck in an awkward spot, which is, an old brand on a background color that doesn't work with this brand in four, in four years of a 10 year. And so that's not a very easy path. And so well, I, I recognize- What was the price on the fully repainted bucket? Well, it was the 144, so we would expect it to be that, but then would we be able to get 10 years out of it or would we only get six? And that would come down to regional utilities negotiation, right? So when Sandesson said, guess what? We'll, you know, we'll reimburse you for six years yeah. And then you're out of it completely. Everybody's like, well, that's not a bad thing to consider because we don't have one less headache. But Well, they're doing that for a reason. So, <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it, it is in some way showing value to the thing. So, But, but we're exactly. still in a bad spot and we still have a bad logo. We still have a bad background. And, so. I, and I also brought up at the meeting that I, uh, I was under the assumption that when we changed the brand, that all of this was kind of a foregone conclusion that this was going to happen as part of that. This was the uh, unmentioned elephant in the room. Yeah. I remember Jim being very clear that it would not be addressed. <laughs> is it is it worth going to regional utilities and say and negotiating and saying okay we have four more years they've got this this challenge right now um, could we go ahead and renegotiate the contract for a ten year contract with the four prorated four just about any question is a fair question so yes the TDC could direct us to to do that if they. Um, felt that was prudent or based on anything that y'all might as a body uh, reshare with them it's a it's an unclear situation in fairness are we looking say, for to action? reinforce this message the area of south walton that has the most brand confusion is sandestin and miramar beach so and look at the research that we just got and look at where the people were, we're at where they were. Excellent point. 
that might be the strongest point that I've heard for this day. <laughs> Exposure that you get out of this is it's just huge. It's crazy not to do it. So, you need to come to the you need to come to the TDC meeting and tell them that. I'm only estimating the uh, white on current background. Let's just say estimated at fourteen thousand. I think this ribbon approach you got to assume is another 50% more, so maybe it's 20,000, and I'm making up numbers based on the little bit that we have been given. So, so, so there's more painting going on to put a new white ribbon all the way around the globe. So you think 34,000? I think it's probably, what I say, 20. You said 20 and 14. Well, 14 is what I think 50 white on puke would be, <laughs> and I think that color on white ribbon would be maybe 24 another 10,000 because you're just extending white, you're not extending three colors. With but I'm guessing. Dust, with sand dustings, um, you know, garbage on there, would they, would they be willing to help with any of that cost? Yeah, it says <laughs> the sand, sand dust is no yeah. on there. I think, I mean, honestly, when, I, I think when you drive through that, you, when you drive by there, you don't, you don't think you'll see that. You don't see that. Yeah. You're lucky to see, you know, the old logo because of that color that's on there now with yeah. that, that yeah. piece. That's no very, contrast. That's tough. That's very tough. Yeah, if it's gonna be Whatever's going to happen, it's going to be done. Right. The whole thing has to be, be seen. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. It needs yeah. to be white with the new logo. Yeah, so how do we formulate a motion to say that we want to pursue the full wrap with the possibility of approaching utilities on a renegotiation of the contract that would possibly give us a more equitable financial pitch? I second it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, again, just to make sure I understood it. Uh, full solution, appealing to regional utilities for consideration, and seeking if it's going to be at X amount of cost. How long can the term be? Ten was a, a point of reference, and and. The backup from this conversation was it's in an area that um, confusion exists. There's a high percentage of our consumers in this area. The highest. Yes. The mm -hmm. highest. Research shows. Okay. The highest percentage of ours. Uh, that's the motion I understood. And does this Correct. need to be included in that motion? Or that, is that I don't think so. I mean, everybody's like, yeah, if you can get that done, just do it. Because it's. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> really? 6000 bucks. Oh, there was some discussion. Oh, is that what it is? Six thousand. Did I hear a second on that motion? Yes. Okay, I agree. Discussion. I have, I have just a couple questions. Yes, ma'am. This photograph does not show any landscaping. It doesn't. The one that's the live picture is yeah. up under your does index that mean finger. That we can get those bushes yeah. cut down. I can't <laughs> imagine uh, that we can get that done. Uh, would we ask? Um, that's like a catch-22, you know, you want to see the logo, but you want to see that well, We were just at the design charrette meeting two weeks ago, and one of the criticisms was, you know, God bless, how come regional utilities won't hide those things better? Because we don't want to see that. There's lower landscaping. But they don't want to, some members of the community don't want to see the, the structure at all. So you can't really win that it is what it is. situation. We yeah, had that, that was argued at me because there are several, or there are a couple of members, including myself, who live on the north side of the bay and see it every day. When you talked about the frequency that it is yeah. notable, so I thought most people were tolerant of that and accepted of that, that if it's a reasonable yeah. amount of money, that that's doable. Would there be any value to increasing the size of the logo on this tank? You're talking about the ground tank? Mm -hmm. No, the, the large tank. Um, I think that as soon as you get much bigger, the curvature makes you distort and you're seeing 85% of it in your in okay. your frame of reference. And so I think that was the balance. And do we want to do we want to say something like the 16 beach communities welcome you? Um, I think the region utilities felt that the Sandestin tag was to keep harmony from unraveling. And it was done in other places. Inlet Beach welcomes you. Um, I'm not sure. The fewer the words, the yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Dan's yeah. point, you don't see that. I've never actually seen those words. I was questioning mm -hmm. whether they were there. They were there. They're there. Okay. 
it, it's, you have, in fairness, talking about billboards, you have less of a six second or eight second read, and this you have a two second read. Mm -hmm. And so it's pretty restrictive. Okay. Any other discussion? I think on the on the tank there, the regional utilities tank, regional utilities welcomes you. It should be mm -hmm. underneath, and our logo should be moved up to the top above the tree. It's line. a reasonable solution. Mm -hmm. Okay. Consider that to be a goal of ours. Good point. Yeah. Good point. Okay, so. Any other discussion? Okay, we had a motion and a second, so let's vote. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Okay, and so the last thing that you have <coughs> as far as a document in front of you is the analytics, and I'm, I don't really want to go through all 41 slides with you. I will update you that we have made some very uh, preliminary diagnosis about the website and its um, potential struggle. And um, load times is the is the number one thing. And so uh, Zender has helped, and we have gone back to Miles and said we want your uh, diagnosis on load times because uh, we think the bounces are um, maybe related to what as users we're pretty quick to give up and so we're going to start with that we may have a long way to go i'd love to have been further down the road to a magical solution but we are doing the best we can and um, a little progress is being made um, again on and on there's tons of stuff here that is uh, traditional i don't think there's anything that screams uh, one way or the other, you will know the YouTube, um, 2.2 million total views, up 24%. That is because the Reserve Campaign is currently directing uh, consumers to that, back to try to tell stories. So we're very pleased with big numbers like that. And you can even see it more prominently on slide 21, that it is uh, showing some significant pickup. Um, I do want to mention that um, sorry, I was looking for leads. I may have gone through it. I'm not going back. But um, we had a placement in Oprah recently. And last year, um, I think it was something like a makeup number. So, 1,600, 16,000 leads came in over the course of the placement. Uh, pretty evenly dispersed 2,000 for this partner, 2,000 for that partner. Um, it has exploded. It's almost 10x in the response that we've been getting on that placement. And um, not only domestic is it basically 10x, uh, we're getting Nepal and Israel and Cray, which is crushing us because we don't have an international fulfillment program. And so that's Haley. Uh, so she's doing her best to keep up. It's crushing our. Um, our postage button, <laughs> budget, but we also weren't willing to just ignore those people. It happened. We're going to work on maybe seeing if we can control that a little bit more in the future. But the big stuff is domestic, and um, I, I, it's very unusual to see a successful program go 10x on a factor of fulfillment. So the participants that we're getting through the co-op programs should be very happy, although their postage budgets are, are probably in a little trouble too. Um, <laughs> Um, yeah, and Oprah, and Oprah's insertion um, may be repeated more than once, and we already talked about maybe altering that message and altering when it's placed. If it really, truly is that incredibly impactful, maybe we can use that a little more surgically. Um, so that that's one of the things that's surprising, and we're like, these numbers can't be right. So we went back and dug and dug and dug, and they're right. So. Um, always something to analyze, and we, we're doing our best to make good decisions with that. Um, I really hope I can get us through this 30 seconds and then let you see that today uh, Southern Living went live with the five uh, lifestyle videos that were part of the 50th anniversary that we did. And um, it was a ton of work. Um, these will run for a month on Southern Living, backed by digital, backed by some other display, and then we will own them um, going forward. And so uh, I think this will give you a sample. My name is Chris Alvarado, and I'm a musician, and I'm also the owner of Driftful Guitars here in South Walton. 
I grew up 20 miles north of here, and it's a whole different world. Everybody says, oh, oh, the South Walton is just so different. What makes it special is that everybody's doing what they love. People moved here to be business owners or musicians or to be painters and sculptors. Everybody's kind of pushing each other to do better and do more. You can't help but feed off of that energy. There are a ton of artists up and down 38 and in South Walton. Adal Francisco is one of my favorites. I think a lot of artists come here to get inspired. That's why it's a, such a big art community. What inspires me about South Walton is uh, the beach, the colors, you know, the texture, of the sun. There's people who do glass blowing. Allison Craft, she does handmade leather and pearl jewelry, which sell not only to all around the area, but to musicians all over the country. Fair Price is so encouraging for what you do, and um, it's just such a tight-knit community. And they're here because they want to be, and they're here because it's such a cool place to live. I've always uh, admired what they do, and it's inspired me to not just build guitars, but to build guitars that I feel like are pieces of art as well. It takes about four months to build a guitar, and I'm by myself in my shop doing it, so it's really neat to be able to finally put it out there and let people see it when I get done with it, and uh, to see people's reactions to both the guitars and the songs. We live in a community where people can do art and people support it. So many people struggle to make a living as an artist, whether it's a musician or a painter or a sculptor. And around here, it's like if you believe in it, everybody supports you. Everybody else believes in you, and that's such a really neat thing. Not many places in the, in the world really offer that. South Walton is different because it's a tight-knit community that don't really exist anymore. When, when you're here, it's not really this tangible thing where you can just feel it. People who come here go, I just love this place. And uh, that's what makes this area special. Context. <laughs> so that's one of five. I hope you get a chance to see the other four. We're very proud of them and we're very spoiled to live in a community. A, that's cooperative, most of you in this room, whether it was indirect or direct, had something to do with making all this work, making this process work, making this brand work, and um, the amount of time that was given by chefs and artists and musicians, and it really was flattering. So um, I hope that y'all can celebrate that in your worlds, because I think there's very few ways that you can entice somebody about the quality of life here and why it's worth a visit better than here in uh, that kind of context, to Richard. <laughs> And then you have a little uh, beach bucket list in front of you that did appear in the, in the 50th anniversary. Um, we're a very charming uh, accidental conversation with the woman who owns the Twin Oaks farm stand in Grayton. I went in there looking for eggs and, and she said, who are you? And I said, and she had the book underneath her cash register, pulled it out. And she's like, I got named as the best eggs by Southern Living four years ago and I've lived off of that for three years. And I've already had people who made a special trip to find my shop because of that little booklet. And I'm like, wow, oh, that's pretty nice. You know, we have all these damn analytics. And, and really, those are the type of things that convince you that there's some good stuff being done. And we have some really good um, context. Context. Here, so. and good, eggs. Eggs. good eggs. That is the heap of stuff that I have for you today. Um, I have two uh, additional announcements. One, I'm very um, grateful and very uh, sad at the same time that Mr. Richard Ross will be leaving our community in the near future and vacating his seat. Uh, we put about three years into this, sir, and um, I couldn't thank you more. Uh, so we'll be all interested in, in your next endeavor, so please don't forget your friends in South Wall. And lots of great people in the audience today. Uh, a face that hopefully you'll get to know a little bit more. Hannah Kraft is joining us. She is taking a vacancy that we had at a uh, graphic uh, artist coordinator website, which uh, some of you remember John Cross. She will be starting Monday. It was nice enough to come and sit in on today. So I hope she's going to come back after we get out of this. But, um, uh, and, and again, I think you know everybody else uh, at one point or another in the room. So that is my time, and there's dates uh, for future uh, proceeding yes. on the schedule that we've been on. Well, we need, we need to move to public comment this time before the audience gets a chance to address any questions or concerns or ask any questions. Is there anyone that would like to say anything? No? Okay. 
What about our committee? Anything else? All right. Well, our next meeting will be May 3rd, and I assume here again? Yes, ma'am. Okay, at 3 o'clock. And if there's no further discussions or questions, we'll yeah, uh, question. Can I uh, uh, look at the calendar, but I'm questioning the July 5th meeting date. Thank <laughs> 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 you. Yeah, and um, last year, I think I think we might have relocated that week. I believe that we did. Um, but we had obviously just as fixed for, for exactly that type of conversation. Um, it is very difficult for us to move a Tuesday uh, later because that is a BCC Tuesday. Um, so we would move June back or two weeks forward. Um, how much? Let's see. Obviously, it's your, ultimately, it's your schedule, so if you guys... June 28th would be the Tuesday before, or June 21st, if you want to go two weeks prior. 28th? Thank you. 28th. Okay. Mm -hmm. Anybody have a problem with June 28th? June 28th will be BCC, but it'll be in the north, it'll be in the morning, so I don't see any issues with that. Uh, we'll be in the next minutes that it was changed and the next agenda to remind you of June 28th. Okay, great. Next meeting, May 3rd. May 3rd. Correct. Okay, we stand adjourned. Thank you all. Thank you guys.